Hello, Ninbuzz viewers, it is I, Red Panda Gamer, here for another 3DS Virtual Console review. Today's episode will be covering The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening DX, which was released on June 7th in the Virtual Console Store for $5.99. It was originally released as just Link's Awakening in black and white in 1993, and was re-released in color as the DX version in 1998. All the development process I will be talking about will be about Link's Awakening, as DX was just a simple recolor. I will be getting into the few differences that there are between the two games, but for now, let's not worry about that. Let me first just say that Link's Awakening DX is one of my top 5 favorite portable video games of all time. I really do love it that much, and I cannot believe how great of a game it is as just a portable. Link's Awakening started off as an unsanctioned side project that the developers liked to call like an after-school program. It was being developed around the same time as A Link to the Past. After A Link to the Past's success, many people were considering developing the game that would later become Link's Awakening as just a straight port to the Game Boy of Link to the Past. However, as they started working on it, they began going in a completely different direction and making it its own standalone game that would come after Link to the Past. Link's Awakening only took a year and a half to develop. The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening DX is a beautiful, beautiful game. With the recoloration of the graphics, the game seriously is one of the prettiest looking games that came out for the Game Boy Color. They really wanted to push and see how far they really could take just a Game Boy Color game. And I honestly think it has visuals that almost rivaled the Super Nintendo. Okay, maybe not the Super Nintendo, but definitely the Nintendo Entertainment System. It really did look great. And especially compared to some other Game Boy Color games that really didn't seem to take advantage of what was there. The levels are huge, it's a huge expansive world and you'll find many many different places and every world feels different, you'll never feel like you're being in just a rehash of a previous world. Dungeons have really cleverly thought out puzzles, bosses look really great, enemies in general all look really great, and as I mentioned, there are a lot of cameos from other characters that were just kind of kept along from its original development. Some shy guys, piranha plants, you know, you'd be surprised at some of the stuff you might find. The music behind this game is really great, in fact it's some of my favorite Zelda music of any of the Zelda games. The composers of the music, interestingly enough, this was their first time ever composing a video game and I thought they did a great job. In one of many interviews about the evolution of Zelda, the producer of Link's Awakening said himself that without Link's Awakening, Ocarina of Time could have been very very different and much more like a Link to the Past. Although it's not too evident while playing Link's Awakening, there are many similarities between the two games, like trading sequences, the fishing minigame, and even the whole village's outlook. The story behind The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening is pretty simple, but not bad at all. We start off on a scene of a boat out on sea. This game, like I said, occurs after A Link to the Past, so Link, after defeating Ganon, decides he wants to sail out to distant lands to further his training for the upcoming battles that may ensue. However, while out at sea, he is struck by lightning, you know, there's a horrible storm, and he wakes up in a strange bed after being saved on the beach by a girl named Marin. Now, after waking up, he, is, he finds that he's in a completely foreign land called Koaland and that his sword is probably still on the beach. When he goes to the beach to retrieve his sword, he also sees that his boat is completely destroyed, and a wise owl comes by to explain to him that the only way to return home is to wake the windfish, which is dreaming in a giant egg on top of Mount Tamaranch, and only can be awakened by the eight instruments of the sirens, which he must collect through the eight dungeons. The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening follows the similar pattern to all Zelda games as fighting, puzzles, adventure, and well in this game, getting to know the people around the town, I mean that really does have a lot to do with the game this time around. There's trading sequences and mini games and there's little side quests here and there, and side quests weren't very common, I mean this is one of the first Zelda games to have side quests. So in its own way, this you know Zelda game was pretty inventive and innovative for the series, and a lot of things they did in it changed it forever. This is also the game that features the rock's feather which allows Link to jump, believe it or not.
Also, there's a lot of two there's a lot of 2D sequences that are similar to Zelda 2: Link's Adventure. Boss battles are the tradition of whatever item you found in the castle or in the dungeon will most likely be the way you kill them. Some bosses are difficult, some are not. Actually, interestingly enough, in DX, the boss you're seeing now is actually a lot quicker and a lot more difficult in the original Link's Awakening than he is in this one. However, there aren't too many more differences other than the fact that DX has a color-based dungeon, which is pretty cool, and a different perfect game ending, which you can only achieve if you don't die at all. So basically, I love this game. Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening DX for $5.99 is a steal. It's a fantastic game and honestly probably one of the best games you can have in your 3DS library right now. I think it's best the game you can have right now other than probably Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. So basically, Zelda and Link have a monopoly on the 3DS. But yeah, between the cameos between characters, the developed story that we've never seen before from a Zelda game, side quests, just everything this was for just a Game Boy Color game, it really is one of the best games you can buy right now for your Game Boy Color or your 3DS. If you don't have a 3DS, buy this for your Game Boy Color, go on eBay and buy one, they're not too expensive. If you have a 3DS, I don't even know why you're still waiting, go download it right now, $5.99, go search your couch cushions for change. Just go do it, because this really is a great game, and you won't want to put it down. I give this game an easy, easily earned 10 out of 10. Please go download it. Please at least, even, I don't even care if you emulate this game. Even though it's stupid for you to do it, there's no real reason to. You need to try this game. You need to play it. Even if you don't like it, just be able to say you've played it, you know what it's like. And if you don't like it for some reason, come tell me, because I won't believe you. For Ninbuzz, I'm Red Panda Gamer. Please subscribe to Ninbuzz, comment on this video, like this video, do whatever you gotta do to show your love. I'm Red Panda Gamer. Have a great one, guys.